Hi Leo, welcome back. We are here to do your monthly forecast. This is covering various um, aspects for you as a zodiac sign Leo. It's also covering couples, singles, those of you in between, your employment, your health, your finances, um, and any days that may come up in your chakra system. So it's sort of like your go-to to actually help you get through the whole month. Now, the first day of the month, some things that come, can come up can be linking in with education, um, your spirituality, a potential connection going to the next level, if and what. With that frequency, pay really close attention to your psychology. I'm seeing also themes, and it's a hard aspect. The beginning of the month is pretty tough, and although we're moving into Leo season, we've got the ups and downs and ebbs and flows, but it's really honing in on those days of why it's coming up and, and what potentially can be happening. When it does come to the energy of your health, there can be subject matters to do with that. And I'm really seeing an alignment needed connected to mind, body and soul. And this has been a huge theme for all the zodiac signs for the month of August. So there can be problems on the first day, but the benefit that's going to come is your career sector. So anything you're working on of the 10th house and leveling up, it's integration needed but it's almost don't fall back into fair base frequency of lack of success. And for those of you that are unemployed, don't stress there is a subject matter here and there still can be themes coming up. But it's almost like universe is giving you the tools and they're saying, OK, yes, this is challenging. Let's look at the reasons why, but let's continue forward. It will be busy. We're also having themes on this day very much linking in to um, Uranus going retrograde. So with that, it does fall in your career sector. So we do tend to get the polarities and any things that are coming up that are linking into Uranus, I will mention that. So that those things you can pay attention to so you can correct them as you move through the months. With it, with your first house placement, you will have more energy this month. I will say that. But it is going to be important to keep your fluid up with the crown chakra also um, pacify us with triggers because we have Chiron and Aries retrograde. It is Mars energy. So although we, we are more energetic in a sense of strength and it's happening outside of us, there also can be themes of burnout. Uh, and with Chiron and Aries retrograde, some of us may actually accidentally have potty mouth. So it's really speaking before we think and coming from a place of emotion over a, a physical 3D and, and sometimes even an overwhelm because there's so much to achieve and do in such a short space of time. Now the full moon in Aquarius is hitting your seventh house and that's linking to relationships. So again, because we're covering different strokes for different folks of that zodiac sign, I will mention more in the comprehensive report linking to each placement of how it relates to couples, how it relates to singles. Now, being a full moon, it's at 11 degrees. It's going to be on the third. You'll, you'll feel that potentially by the end um, of the beginning of the month, end of July, moving forward. And it will be for most of the month. There can be common themes. It also will link into 2021. And the reason I say that is because we are going to have Saturn and Jupiter in Aquarius. So any old energy that we're letting go of, it can be highly anxious. I do tend to find each person kind of um, deals with the full moon energy at a different level. Full moon is a closing of a cycle and a beginning of a new one. So it's a bit like the full card. You're looking at it and you're going, there's infinite ways this can go. Really, sometimes the things that are holding us back are memories of the past. So when it comes to all your deep connections, there can be memories coming up. This can be with your family members. It can be and because Aquarius is global energy. But it's also the frequency of how you directly relate to those energies, uh, your friendship groups, your partnerships, your contracts with employment, all of those areas, there's a summing up frequency. And I really do feel there's things coming up as to what you're physically choosing to do and the belief in which you may feel is it outside of your control. So there's this push-pull energy going on. Just sit with that energy on the day. Uh, but don't be surprised if major themes come up in that area. If you are coming to terms with an energy of a connection, be it at a contract level or a partnership level, 
Um, try and make peace with it, but trust in the process of what's moving forward. That theme can even come through at the first day of the month if you did leave a connection and you weren't happy with it. Um, you innately are changing and you're viewing things from a very um, strength oriented energy. So wherever you're going in life, it is to take you to the higher ground. Blasts from the past also this month can come back. And I was talking to my partner about this and um, he found the whole situation quite comical. Uh, yin and yang of blasts from the past, just because it's a blast from the past, it can be at a higher or a lower frequency. So it can be conflict relating to conversations with exes or um, connections in general. How you feel about that can be yin and yang. So, you know, it may be in their eyes, they see you as 10 out of 10, but in your eyes, you may see them as a 1 out of 10. So it really depends on how you will relate to that energy of the blast from the past. Now, on the third, you can find that there can be also with your health and your psychology and well-being and an overwhelm connected to work. So if you are working, upskilling, um, anything that you're putting your energy into, it can be quite challenging. Just maintain the equilibrium moving forward. Try and be patient with the day and do the best you can to move through it, but be in awareness of that frequency there. There also can be psychology linking to your abilities. Uh, maybe feeling a little bit overwhelmed that, oh my gosh, can I do this? Just really trust in the process because even walking through a dark tunnel, we do reach the end of that tunnel and we do create new tools through that process. So there are benefits of dealing with slight aspects of adversity. Now, on the fourth, what you will find is um, it's a really great day for networking for you because it's your 11th house placement. You may be looking at the frequency of um, the things you want to do, um, networking with colleagues, uh, looking at your career sector, um, looking at your social group and really what you want to do in a sense of larger group energy. And I do find this can be a very social time. So if you're needing to send resumes out and things to that degree, it would be a really beneficial day. Even though it will be really great flowing energy, you do need to actually be cautious as to, you know, pacing yourself through this month because we will have a lot of get up and go. We're then going to have on the 5th, Mercury entering your first house of Leo. So with your communication, you may be more direct in the way you communicate. You also might be feeling that you can speak your truth. Again, we do need to be mindful that we do have Chiron and Aries. Let me look. So when it does come to your career, you may find you're able to actually communicate more effectively. Um, looking at education, foreign travel, it can be very busy, but you will be speaking in layman's terms of where you want to go. Um, and it does feel like it's quite a balanced energy. So stay fluid with that day. See what comes up for you. And it's a really great time at the moment to actually journal these things so that it can help you navigate through the month so you're on path for the end of the year because with the astrology moving forward we really do have about a three month window and that three month window is going to give us an opportunity to really tie up loose ends get everything we can get done done and really tackle the things that require your physical energy right now you may find um, we almost have to under offer over deliver um, I, overstating you're going to over deliver and then under offer because it can be a very demanding month. We will be having Mars going retrograde this year towards the end of the year. So when I'm trying to help you navigate your time management through this year is to help you get the best out of it. So at a very karmic level, you've achieved the targets that you want to. Some of you also could be looking at your health and really wanting to transform that area with the sixth house. And if there is something, it can be really at a psychological level, a belief in what you feel about yourself and it's self-esteem based uh, because you guys have the most beautiful demeanor in a sense of your auric field, the way you hold yourself, um, the look, you're, you're a very beautiful zodiac sign. So, you know, if things to that degree are coming up, um, you know, just really tap into yourself and look at the beliefs surrounding it because I really do feel you could potentially be underestimating yourself. 
Now on the 7th, we're having Venus entering Cancer. And again, this is to do with home. And what I, I, I do find, because you've got 12th house placement there, any themes you have been working on in the last two years that were really large connected to home, large connected to the things you were tuning into, it might have even been a spiritual belief. I, I'm feeling as though there could be beautifying of your home going on. You may be thinking that you want something. Sit with the energy moving towards that date because it will be playing out prior and then look at it from a point of view of, you know, what are the reasons behind this? Is it because you, you are, you know, working from home? Do you want to beautify things? Do you need to correct things? Um, are you innately wanting to spend more time at home and go into nurturing? Um, but again, what's coming up in your mind, really document, take some time for yourself um, and sit with it. But some of you can actually be getting um, beautifying your home and doing things to that degree. Now, we're going to be having hmm, a really great day for you linking in with connections. Education is going to be on the 9th. You will find that even if you're second guessing yourself, you're going to be able to achieve even better. And on the 10th, you're going to find that in your career sector, you might be again second guessing yourself. So it's these ebbs and flows that we're going through. Anything at a complicated level linking in with your career, it may be more complex. Um, try and have patience with yourself. Do the best you can. There's more integration needed. Squaring as aspects can cause difficulties. Now, it may be due to surrounding energies. And we do have the nodal axis of Sagittarius and Gemini. So for you, you know, your belief about what luck was in the past um, can, you know, your romance, your children and your luck is Sagittarius and the Gemini axis is your 11th house of your, your wider group energy. So there can be growth really um, linking in with your connections, your groups, changing that up. It can become quite social. And really speaking your truth to these individuals, creating healthy boundaries, networking. Uh, it's very beneficial. So you may find that you're a social butterfly, um, but you have a lot of work to do and you have a lot of people needing on you. So these subject matters can cause conflict when you do have uh, potential work, study and things to that degree. So if you can actually allow yourself to have the best of both worlds, really having that crucial time management, it's going to take the pressure off you where it won't become overwhelming. Where are we at, Leo? Okay, then we have the new moon in Leo. And, you know, I do tend to find it's a bit like on your birthday. You tend to find, um, and an astrologer mentioned it from this perspective, and I had to reflect back on previous birthdays. It's very similar to having an upgrade. You're, you're becoming the new version of your first house. Do tune into looking at with that first house placement this month what others are wanting you to be. Um, what you potentially think they want you to be over who you are. When we're having first house placement, it can be very transformative. So we're getting the yin and yang. There can be a change in your appearance that you're wanting to do. You can be feeling just, you know, you're feeling yourself sort of thing and you're changing. Just really be quite fluid two to three days either side of that. But that energy will transition all the way over to next month for you, which can really benefit you. Then we're moving into the middle of the month and it's the second house placement. So when we look at the second house placement, you have Virgo in that energy. It can be analytics, details. Um, what I'm picking with this between the second and the 10th house, again, it's your energy of career. It may be more detail orientated, really having to concentrate. I do find towards the end of the month, it is going to benefit us if we're moving into alignment and ticking those boxes and dealing with any challenges and, you know, paperwork related dynamics, things that we need to concentrate on, it will be very fast paced. We do to a degree have the benefit that we have Chiron and Aries retrograde, which can slow the energy down. So we need to be mindful of our communication sector um, for all of us collectively so that we're not speaking from trigger or frustration uh, because although we'll have the energy, it can be full steam ahead. And, and Mars and Chiron is just like, mm, come on, just slow down a little bit to 
actually be able to see some of these things that are needing to be reflected upon. On both days, I do feel um, between the 25th and the 29th, your second house and your sixth house will be activated. So again, themes to do with your health, themes to do with your self-esteem, themes to do with your work energy. Um, and maybe even, again, as I mentioned, changing your appearance and wanting to look at certain things and, and really feeling like you're wanting to level up in a particular area, whatever you feel is your opinion with this. But it will be the devil in the detail with that. It's also a really great time between the 19th and the 30th of the month because it's Virgo energy to have health checkups and actually, you know, check in um, with the GP and, and see where you're at, whatever that is, if you do want to have checkups and, and just get everything in order, so to speak. Some of you also, because we have the energy of third eye, um, of the energy of sun, it can be glasses that are needed. If you feel that, you know, your eyes are oversensitive and things to that degree, if you feel guided to, you know, get a checkup. Now on the 30th, it may be challenging. Again, when it does come to actually tuning into what to do and who to depend on. So the challenges might be, again, it's given to you and you're having to sort things um, and the real deep importance is don't give your power away. So if you feel people aren't working with you, don't give more than what they're giving. And it may be due to a scheduling issue or people placing an expectation on you. Um, really stay focused on your lane. And I'd say pretty much from about the 25th through to the first day of the following month. And that can be because people may be placing expectations on you. It could be taking a toll on your health and just create those very firm, solid boundaries. Now, the chakra energies that are going to come up for your zodiac sign is third eye um, because you are really using your analytical mind. It can also be your root chakra and your heart chakra because, you know, Leo energy is also heart chakra. So by utilizing the gems and actually um, if you find ailments in that area, especially um, if it's coming up at the very beginning, try not to put any checkups off, you know, go and do what you need to do as well as more so towards the end of the month, but keep awareness of it. If it has been something that's been ongoing from a chakra holistic point of view, you can do the guided meditation in that area and you can actually um, have the frequency where you can eat the food groups, which would be blue, red, um, and green. Uh, and, and use gemstones linking to that also, which can balance it. Now, for couples, I do feel um, this month will be unique in a sense that with Chiron Retrograde, where's the eighth house? Okay, yeah, a lot of dreams are going to be reflected upon. So when it comes to your shared resources, um, there's reflection in that area and it will be pretty much till the end of the year. The big caution that we do have is to be mindful that, you know, when we look at astrology and psychic energy and the reality of this being a number four vibration year, which is one, 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 it's for males, females, it's, it's each of us in the yin yang effect. So this self-development that we're physically going through can be challenging when we have one viewpoint and the other party has another. And it's not that that can't be bridged and brought together. It's really, you know, trying to stay quite fluid this month. You may have the end goal in mind, but as to what those things are going to be, it can be really airy-fairy at the moment and up in the air, but you're really honing on the reality of things and, you know, it's a great time in a quality sense of your life with those shared resources to look at where the delusions and the illusions were and really a bit like a budget, looking at it and pulling it back down and basing it on, okay, what is that new kind of um, forecast moving forward and where can we take that situation? There may be differing views. And again, you know, whatever it is that can be achieved, it's, it's what we need to do to change that. Now, when it does come down to your connections, it might have been challenging in a sense, but again, I am feeling there is, you're wanting somebody in your energy to be quite social. There's an energy and a need for socialization, broadening things. So if innately you're in a connection and you feel quite strange, um, standoffish maybe, and things were a few months ago flowing and then it's kind of gone a bit funny, 
this unique upgrade that you're physically having it will plateau and you know really be fantastic by 2021 and it's not to say that you're not going to have beneficial energies there it's more that because we had sudden in Aquarius it was helping us reflect upon the things that we did need to change within the connection um, and so just to continue to implement that and have faith in that process if you find yourself super busy I do feel for those of you that are coupled, you do need to, you know, if you find yourself focusing on your partner a little bit too much and you're feeling triggered um, and a little bit overwhelmed, the energy that's calling upon you is the targets that you're needing to achieve this month. So to balance that yin yang effect, it's actually to, you know, place the energy back into the things that you're needing to do because I do feel it's going to be really busy. I'm also feeling social endeavors could cause a little bit of friction. Uh, potentially even jealousy so both sides of the fence um, you guys may become a little bit confused as to you know coming back together doing bits and pieces that you need to achieve so just keep the communication open and I feel you guys will be fine it will be more a nurturing time when we do reach the point that Venus enters Cancer um, but again, you could be really up in your head. So keeping that communication open and anything in a sense of family, creativity, um, nurturing and your personal needs, just choose to articulate it. Because if you can sit with it and understand, it's you really at a psychological level being able to communicate your truth in those areas of what you need and you will find it will benefit the situation. So, you know, crosswise um, can really be coming up. What else am I seeing? <sighs> Some of you might have been actually tuning into, okay, do, do we want this house? Is this the home to be in? I do feel a lot of that will transform when uh, around October. So if you've had hunch energies and you've been looking at the devil in the detail, maybe connected to the cost, uh, beautifying, changing. There can also be things that may be during this time and needing replacing and things to that degree, really weighing up the pros and cons for the biggest scope of things. Some of you may continue to stay where you are, but I do find as we reach October, that could come up for review again. Financially. Let me look. Um, some of you may be having changes occurring um when it does come to your children now if you do have children you may find that their demeanor is changing that some of the ways they're communicating with you is changing some of their expectations are changing but yours also are changing i also see a, a differing in view as to you know what to do with assets where to allocate them how to share the resources out so people's needs versus what you actually have the ability to achieve might also be coming up I do feel you'll be very direct by the end of the month and anything that does come up in a sense of a hiccup will be to the point you would have um, really come to terms with what these things are and you'll be able to actually move through documentation um, networking looking at your assets um, looking at paperwork but I find that I do feel at a spiritual level, if both of you are, you know, very spiritually connected, it will be more balanced. Now, those of you that are single, um, and it really does come through in the couple's energy too, it's almost like you want love, but you want the energy of wanting to have it all, which yes, you can. It may trigger the energies around you at the moment, but it does feel this very independent energy. And I just keep hearing the term wanting to level up, wanting to be able to have the things that triggered you in the past to really be in check where you've got your career sorted, you've got your, you know, finance sorted, you've got your friendship groups and there just feels this innate transformation. And it is potentially because you did have cancer in the 12th house. So at a soul level with your connections and your healing to do with your childhood, I do feel you've actually moved through a lot of that. This will continue to move and you will see the beauty, almost the beauty in the beast in situations. And you might find around this time, you're more direct and assertive as to what you do and don't want. Some of you, again, there's huge themes with the ninth house and I'm really feeling it's almost like all of you, be it singles, couples or in between, 
you're you're wanting a connection that is going to go the distance you're wanting something cemented in a sense that that person is willing to work with you with the eighth house placement so a lot of review is really on that I do feel for those of you that are single if you have been thinking about a past person deep energies can come up at the beginning of the month by the time you do reach mid-month and the end of the month you're really doing a quality check and your self-esteem um, may be really transforming. If you do still feel triggered, continue to do the inner work because you really have positive energies coming. I also feel there's other offers on the table, so don't be surprised if you have many offers, even if it's not just directly the one you want. Although I am seeing the person from the past coming back and having an opportunity during Chiron and Aries retrograde and Uranus retrograde coming back and really wanting to address those things. Hmm. The thinking aspect of things can be challenging, but overall I do feel you're really, um, some of you are really um, very focused on self and self-development, but I do feel th the more in detachment of scenarios you are, it's almost the more attractive you're becoming. So people are in awe of your beauty at the moment. Now, with your career sector, like I mentioned, it, it is going to really benefit you. And, and all the cycling out of energy, if you do feel suddenly it's a bit like these are the days of our lives and, you know, you've got the hourglass and things are sifting through your hands, you know, whatever is truly yours will always stay there. But whatever's really in your soul, higher purpose is going to come towards you. So I really do trust in that process of this development that's occurring inside of you. And with your career sector, uh, don't be too uh, shy to take, you know, a lot of you uh, have bitten off a lot and you're achieving a lot. Just be very gentle with yourself. Try not to tune into time as per se, because it can actually affect it further. It, it tends to cause more anxiety. You're going to need to take time during the month. The first pocket of the week, expect um, bedlam, uh, more in a sense of a lot coming at you. And you may have felt that by the end of July. <clears throat> Had to think about that then. Yeah, July. By 2021, every step you're taking in that upskilling, um, especially if it's happening at work and you're learning a great deal, you know, you're having to look at things. It is because we have so many planets retrograde. Your mind can be um, in override at the moment with the Leo energy coming through and it is your zodiac sign so yes you are used to it but with the crown chakra activated and the mind and the body it's really going to be important to have the alignment of all of those frequencies so if you're doing a lot and you're, you're reaching the 10 point take five and go outside put your feet in the ground um, you know take, do some breathing exercises and, and just grab a cool drink and then go back to it. And, you know, if you need to, jot down what you need to achieve. And then you're able to time manage more effectively and it's going to take the pressure off that energy. But I highly advise, you know, to take those moments to be able to pause for a bit, have a neutral zone in your house potentially that you can go to to recharge. Even if it's for five, ten minutes, it will make the world a difference. Now, financially, let me have a look. I do feel much luck surrounding you. You'll have the strength to achieve things. There also can be um, major surprises and dividends paying for your 10th house placement. Um, also, keep the networking open. You may be so surprised that with some of your new hopes and dreams that are coming through are going to be highly lucrative. And, you know, with that axis of Sagittarius and Gemini, um, I've gone through the axis of Cancer Capricorn. It was my moon energy. What I did tend to find that there was major development there. At a psychic level, I wouldn't be surprised, Leo, if you guys are developing that further. So if you are having um, a lot of downloads and you're very tapped in psychically, you're thinking of someone and they call you, you're really um, fine-tuning it. If you need coaching with that, feel free to jump through. I do actually coach um, to help you understand what's happening, how to utilize it, how to tap in. So if you're needing further development there, feel free to come through. 
your alignment of your soul purpose had been coming through. So now you're moving more towards, you know, reconnecting in with energies, um, understanding that, you know, at a manifestation level, we can attract finances, but all the changes you're actually tapping into now is due to the nodal axis and it is going to assist you. Any challenges you have may occur during a retrograde, but they're not, they don't end up being challenges. They end up being blessings because you end up, it's like a quality system looking at the, that domain of your career um, to help you move forward and it will pay off, you know, during that process. So for those of you that are unemployed, let me tune into that frequency. I would definitely say keep your paperwork up to date because anything that you're needing to fine tune with your sixth house access at the moment um, and the squaring aspects, your health. So get your health in order. I'd also highly suggest that with the axis of Sagittarius and Gemini that many of you, let me look. Many of you, if you, if you are looking at um, technology, internet, communication. I'm also um, seeing that applying locally and networking, especially with the second house placement. Also, do not underestimate yourself. We do have that frequency of a soul transformation coming through um, for you. And, and a lot of your contracts are really going to come through at a very high level. So anything you're doing, be it at upskilling level or studying, it is preparing you for the end of the year and 2021. 2021, you'll have major transitions occurring that are going to be huge. This can be growth in your relationships, growth in your businesses, um, and, and growth for marriage. So if you aren't married or you want to take it to the next level and you there's that co-creative energy, there also can be frequencies for children. So I find this will be more towards the end of the year uh, where that can come up, November, December. So if you're not wanting any, be careful. Um, but otherwise, there is definitely change and growth in that domain. What else am I seeing? The industries I do find also, because you have seventh house placement, they need to be more so, you know, we we find at the beginning of the year we had that access that was the conjunction point. A lot of that has been cycling out um, companies, industries that were super, super large, and now it's fine tuning it down as the year proceeds into what now resides. So it's almost like the tower through the year of industries, groups, etc. So because you have the seventh house of Aquarius and we're going to have Saturn and Jupiter in Aquarius, looking at larger corporations or, or looking at global situations. So if you are wanting to actually work from home, let me see, between now and October, if you have been really editing and looking at that and you are running a business at home, you will find between now and October it can start really moving. So anything you've been guided to do and change from home, especially with cancer moving into Venus, beautifying, correcting, um, you know, 